That was a lot of work to help us answer part C. So um, what would be now our thoughts about part C? Let's ignore the part about the speed of the electron being very small. Mm -hmm. um, let's just say, what would we expect to be the shape of the, the electron's trajectory in this magnetic field, based on the, what we've talked about here? Um, well, we have a magnetic field to move in, in, in loops, in circles, right? Uh, let's see. It is true that magnetic field lines form loops. But that actually doesn't turn out to be too related to what we're talking about here, because we're not trying to figure out the shape of the magnetic field lines. We're trying to figure out the shape of the electron's path. And those are two different things. Okay. Um, we already know what the magnetic field looks like here. In the plane of the board, the magnetic field is just pointing into the board. It's true that it's forming a loop that goes into the board and then behind the board, but we don't actually care about those parts of the loop. And since we know that the, the velocity and the force are perpendicular to one right. another, um, I guess that's how I know that it's a constant circular motion. Yeah, that's right. So what's the answer to part C? What is this, what's the shape? Uh, circular? Yeah, that's what they were going for. Yeah. They want you to say that it's going to go through a circle, um, based on what we've talked about here. Yeah. So we really do have um, a velocity here that's perpendicular to the magnetic field. So we would expect to, um, to take a circular path. Yeah. Uh, why do they have to talk about the speed of the electron being very small? Oh, well, that's something I forgot to talk about down here. One thing I was assuming down here was that the magnetic field was uniform. I was assuming that the magnetic field was the same everywhere along the circle, that, because I was assuming that the force was the same everywhere along the circle. So if you're moving through a uniform magnetic field, then you would go through uniform circular motion. Um, if the magnetic field is not uniform, then these forces would be different, and then you'd be going through a kind of spiral, say. You would still be always turning, but you, the, you wouldn't have a constant radius. But if the magnetic field is uniform, then you go through uniform circular motion. Well, the magnetic field isn't really uniform between these two wires um, because, um, for example, if you're very close to one of the wires, there would be a very big magnetic field. Um, so the magnetic field depends on where you are within the wires. However, if you're moving very slowly, then you're going to be forming a very small circle. And if the circle is very small, the magnetic field will be approximately uniform. Since you're not moving very much, the magnetic field will be about the same everywhere uh, where you are. So the only point of saying that the speed was very small was just to say that we're not going to move very far from where we started. So we can approximate the magnetic field as being approximately uniform. Um, so since we approximate that as being uniform, we can assume the shape here um, is going to be uh, circular. Okay. Okay, so the answer here is that we're going to go through uh, circular motion. Okay, well, there's a lot of work to analyze all the different parts of this problem, but this has a lot of things that you might see again on uh, other questions. Um, the first thing we talked about was maybe one of the most important. When you're using this right hand rule for figuring out the magnetic field from a source, you can't use it until you put your fingers in the right location. You have to imagine your thumb is the wire and put your fingers in the point in space that you actually care about before you ask where the finger pads are. Okay. okay. That would certainly be a good question to try again later. Okay. This problem, I think it looked like we could solve the whole problem without even worrying about this side view. It's not very easy to see how the side view relates to the top view, but fortunately we were able to solve everything without even thinking about this. These videos are offered on a pay-what-you-like basis. You can pay for the use of the videos at my website. There's a link to my website in the info box. The address is www.freelance-teacher.com slash videos.htm. Or you can just use the link in the info box. Thank you.